friends, welcome to episode seven of Badass Engineers. We're more than halfway through. Badass Engineers is proudly sponsored by RS Grassroots Education, Powering Tech, Empowering Youth. And today I am speaking with London's first ever all-female garage, Spanners with Manners. And I'm so excited. Shout out to my friend, um, Shirita Pumkhirji, who showed me a video of them and said that I need to interview them. And I messaged them and they were like, yeah. So I'm really excited. Hello, Spanners of Manners. I can see you've joined. Just send me a request and I will accept it. Hello, friends. Uh, so I've got all of your questions in my usual bag, but feel free to ask questions throughout the chat as well if you haven't had a chance to send them to me. And I'm just the best and have my cup of tea ready. And I hope you're all excited for next week's announcement about Young Woman Engineer of the Year. Hello! Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. So, are you Laura? I'm Laura. Yeah. Yes. So you found it's Spanners with Manners. I did. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting! <laughs> Tell me first about your day. How has it been? Did you enjoy the sun? Sorry, say again. Did you enjoy the sun today? Oh, it's been lovely. It was a bit different from the snow the other week. It made a big difference working in it. Right. <laughs> well, you're always, like, working outdoors, so you always get to be, like, in the weather, whether it's raining or sunny, right? Yeah, I mean, we, obviously we've got indoor workshops, but you've got to get the cars in and they're covered in snow or, or, or rain and, the, you know, the metal's cold and stuff, so it makes a massive difference to the sun out. I think it does for everyone. It's just nice to look out the window and see a bit of blue sky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the worst person to be doing this interview because I don't drive. I don't think I've <laughs> been in a garage. I don't know what it looks like on the inside. Um, so how about we start with like a quick introduction. Tell me a bit more about you. Tell me a bit more about Spanners with Manners. So um, I've, I've, I part own um, with my other half, my fiance Siobhan, Spanners with Manners, which is London's first all-female garage. Yes! Um, yay! At the minute, we've got a team of five. Um, there's me, Siobhan, Megan, Liz and Natasha. Um, I've been doing it for 17 years. Uh, what? Liz... Wait, 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 what? 17 years? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, it's a long enough. <laughs> so yeah, but I enjoy it, you know, every day's different, it's not routines, um, and every day's challenging, you know, mentally and, you know, every single day's different, which makes the, joy enjo the job enjoyable. Yeah. So, have you been doing uh, kind of that work for 17 years or has Spanners with Manners been around for 17 years? No, Spanners with Manners is in its second year. Okay, um, but I, I, I started an apprenticeship 17 years ago and I've been working on cars since. Wow, that's really cool. All people are asking how we're doing. Hello, friends. We're doing well. Thank Hello. you. How are you? <laughs> um, and what gives you what gave you the idea to start Spanners with Manners? Well, I got the opportunity to open up my own garage um, yeah. and I just started to get really busy and I, I phoned the college um, to see if I could get an apprentice and they were like, oh, we've got, I ended up interviewing like, I think it was four different girls, you know, and I, that's when I picked Megan and then, um, then we then we got Liz, she, 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 uh, her, where she was working, they ended up putting her in the office, even though she was a mechanic, just because she was a girl to do the phones. Oh my so God. she came to her. And then Natasha, her mum actually lives on our road. And due to the first lockdown, she, she didn't have any work. Um, she was, you know, and she thought, oh, you know, this is something I've always wanted to do. And she come in and said, look, can I have a, can you give me a go? And we did. That so, and, and yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's, that's like it's meant to be. She was brought up literally like two minutes down the road from our garage. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. That's so lovely. Is it, um, so I think I, oh, I found, as an engineer, I found a lot of spaces in engineering um, sort of, I didn't feel like I could make mistakes. Um, is the place kind of that you've put together somewhere where people feel like they can make mistakes? Well, you know, I've worked in garages, excuse me, I've worked in garages before and if you make a mistake, you know, they go they go crazy. But, you know, you know yourself of engineering, it's, you know, if a bolt hasn't moved in 10 years and you undo it, there's a 50% chance it's going to snap, you know. And it's nothing to do with the person doing it. It's because it's, you know, it's corroded in there and, it, you know, it's not going to move. So there's no point losing your temper if something goes wrong because nine times out of ten it's not the person that's actually doing it it's the circumstances in which you you're actually working in you know mm -hmm. so but I think mistakes is good you know you learn from your mistakes you know in any walk of life yeah. and you know you know next time do you know what I might 
keep that up I, I might you know there's other ways around it rather than just you know but you've got to learn from your mistakes yeah of course and and it really it really like hope other people are the places that um that are geared towards engineering learn from you because i really did i found myself in so many places where you know i'd make a mistake then sort of just feel or be made to feel ashamed of it absolutely, of yeah. Yeah, absolutely you know and it's, it's it's like anything when you're learning it you know you're learning so therefore you, you you don't know that there's other ways around it or you know it's like you learn from experience that right, this this car's coming in and i know that bolt's going to be seized there's no point even attempting you know and it's experience and it's, it's knowledge and and that's that's what makes you good in anything you do by by trial and error you know and it's exactly. like and yeah. you know people i know yes obviously it's now a bit of an issue and the job's going to run over but it's it's like anything in life. It's trial and error, and you can only learn by giving it a shot. Totally, and I can just I see some of the beautiful, beautiful comments. Hello, Casey. Casey says we love spanners. I love. Yay! Them. <laughs> and um, Auntie Faith says great business mindset, and I can see E Five Group have joined. Hello, E Five. I love you, and they say amazing, lovely to see folk live in the dream. So, Laura, I have some questions in here and we'll get them out at random and see how many we can answer how do you feel about that a bit scared but let's go for it a go <laughs> it's not scary it's not scary it's exciting okay <laughs> all right let's do it uh wait, wait wait would you like to have a theme song today for the bag yeah let's have a theme song okay would you like to start or shall i make one up you can make one up okay um today's gonna be the day <laughs> Good no, choice. I can't believe I did that. That's yeah, gonna bring it back to you. That's me. Why yeah. now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't I believe in anybody. anybody. Feels the way I do. Good, good, good song choice. Love a bit of a Oh, is it? <laughs> it's really cheesy. Um, so this is the bag's theme, theme tune today, everybody. And this is the question that came out first, and it is a question from yours truly. Thank you very much. Um, it says, what was the most difficult thing about setting up Spanners with Manners? Hmm, it is tough. Um, do you know, I went from being a mechanic to, to, to being a businesswoman, and you know, but being a mechanic, you get your wages at the end of the, the week, and that, but there's so much more to running a business than having just to do the practical side of it. And it was a lot to learn, and I had to learn it quick. Yeah. Um. You know, and it was it was difficult. You know, I didn't know how to set up accounts with parts people, and um, you know, do this weekly and that weekly, and it, you know, it's, it was hard because you know I'm not that academic. Well, I didn't think I did, but I've done all right, I guess. But yeah, it's really difficult to turn your hand to something that you're not that you're not used to at all. Well, it's a bit not, out of your comfort zone. What made that easier? What was helpful that that helped you get there in the end? Um. Yeah, I have a lot of people like I've got friends that are, that have got their own businesses and they give me really good advice and help and yeah. their time and patience. You know, I'll be I'm really lucky I've got good people like that in my life. You know, totally. And honestly, I always tell people like mentorship and having good people in your life is is the biggest thing, the thing that can make the biggest difference. Like, absolutely, like, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you with that. Absolutely. Yay. Oh, <laughs> we've got a question from the comments actually. Hello, Casey. Casey's asking questions. What are your plans and visions for Spanners? Big dreams? <laughs> uh, yeah, just dream big and hope for the best. Um, you know, <clears throat> I'd like I'd like it to keep going the way it's going. It's, it's going so strong. Who knows? In a couple of years, we maybe have a branch in North, South, East, and West London. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, we're um, in Bristol. Are you in Bristol? Yes. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like for my in Bristol, you could. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, yeah, just just maybe just expand out, but um, just you know, just keep going the way we're going. I mean, it's just it goes strength from strength, and it's not just me; it's my team. I've got such a strong team. Yeah. they're fantastic. Personally, I'd like Christmas number one this year, but we'll see what happens with that <laughs> <laughs> after that thing. And anyway. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Um, okay, let's pick another question. Oh, so many people are joining. Hi. Um, would you like to do the Oasis this time? Yes, well, should we pick another one? Oh, okay, let's pick another one. It's your turn, though. It's my turn? Yeah. Okay. Um, huh? Yeah. Champagne supernova in the sky. 
Someday you will find me. <laughs> I can't even sing. You, there's your turn now. Oh, sorry, I think I picked out the same question twice. So put it there. It's a good job it's I, not a raffle, it would be cheating. I don't know, I don't know that song. You don't know Champagne Supernova? No, what is it? That's a good one. Listen to it when you get it. It's a good one. Okay, I'll look it up after. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, so shall we read this question? Okay. It says, uh, it's from Laurie Rao, and it says, um, my dad is an ex-mechanic, but when I inquired about a work experience or a placement in engineering slash design, the school said, there is only the local garage and that's for boys. What advice would you give a 12 to 14 year old girl interested in learning about this industry sector? Do you know, it's, <clears throat> I always think that may it be mechanics or build it, any sort of apprenticeship, they, sh they should st give them the opportunity at secondary school just to get a feel for it and yeah. um, just to see if it's something you know because you they get to sort of 16 and they're like right what, what GCSE is what college do you want to go and it's not always everyone's route yeah um and we've got a young girl at the minute and she she's I think she's yeah she's 15 and she's doing what's called the Duke, Duke of Edinburgh award so she does like she has to accumulate a certain amount of hours yeah to, and she does one hour a week and she loves it you know and I think if if more schools offered that for, for younger children like teenagers and um, more of them you know more more girls might come into this trade because they they would have had it's, it's, it's a bit like work experience isn't it so yeah exactly yeah and I, I just um the the amount of schools where you know you'll get physics or maths or that but you wouldn't get kind of electronics on its own mm -hmm. or you wouldn't get sort of mechanics on its own and you wouldn't do something hands-on and then people sort of feel really removed from the subject and don't understand what the theory is for and of course absolutely people kind of well, lose interest in something. Like engineering mechanics you need a practical side of it there's no point just reading a book about it because then you can't put it into practice, which makes it, you know, you could understand everything, but unless you do it, you're never ever going to get it right, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I agree 100%. And hello, so many more people have joined. Hi, friends. Uh, let's oh. pick another one. Oh my God, is that already the time? Where does the time go? It always goes really quickly. So, this is from X. Is that, ooh, is that from me? No, sorry. <laughs> that's fine <laughs> the age of pandemic that's what happens um how would someone looking to switch careers to train as a mechanic begin that journey so i guess that's if you're a bit older and you've already got some sort of career how would you make that change um well i mean the best way to get into it is obviously an apprenticeship and it is hard i mean i started my apprenticeship at 22 and i oh. i went into a classroom for the 17 year old boys and i hated it it was it was like being at school where they were just, you know, but, you know, that's really the only route into it. I mean, you could always go along to a garage and sort of see if you could sort of get your hands a bit dirty and that. But, you know, it's not like 20 years ago, if you was a mechanic and you were good, that was great. Without the certificates and stuff now, it's yeah. very hard for, you know, insurance purposes and stuff like that. You know, it, things are just a little more complicated now. So unfortunately, the only way to get into that would be to sort of do some sort of apprenticeship, even if it was just an online thing, and then you've done one day practical or something like that. But mm. it is really important to get your foot through the door on the edu educational side of it. That's amazing advice. I've got a question from the comments from E5 Group saying, where is your carriage based? Where is it based exactly in London? Uh, we're in East Finchley in North London. This is going straight over my head. I'm like, I don't uh, understand uh, London, but London people, <laughs> North London. Wait, what is it called again? East, East Finchley. East Finchley. Th that one, that one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> He's been <laughs> We've got um, a comment saying, SWM are absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Yay, thank you. Too. All right, let's pick another question. Oh, let's pick this one. <laughs> okay, this one is from Alma Maria, and it says, how can I tell if a mechanic is pink taxing me? And for those who don't understand what pink taxing is, it's charging me more or trying to sell me some service or product at a higher price just because I'm a woman. Good question. Um, I think if, if you own the car for quite some time, you, you know your car, you know, you know the noises it makes, you know how your brake feels and stuff like that. So if you used to bring your car into a garage and they said, oh, it needs new brakes, you think, well, they're fine I had them done two years ago and they feel absolutely fine to me but I mean if you're a bit unsure 
you could always go onto the government website and, and go onto your MOT history. You know, if things haven't been advised, say, for the last two years, there's no way that it needs changing now because otherwise last year it would have been an advisory and this year it would have got a lot worse. But mm. if, if you really get stuck, you know what, just write down what they're telling you you need, mm. phone a couple of other garages and get a price and, and, and sort of them. And you can always say, look, I appreciate you spotting that, but um, I'd like to take my car out, bring it to another garage and get them to get, get, get a second view on it. You don't always have to go just because your car's in the garage. You're not signed to a contract with them. You know, it's your car at the end of the day. But just do you, you know, just shop around, uh, always look at the MOT history if they're saying it's wear and tear like brakes or suspension and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just you, you don't feel compliant just to go with someone just because they've said you've needed something. Oh, that makes so much sense. That's amazing. I, I, I've got some co people in the comments. So you five groups saying I did my apprenticeship in East Finchley Company above an old garage. Was that is that your garage? Which garage? What does it say? Um, I don't think they said like um, the name of the garage, but they're 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 just like, yay! I was close. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> and they also said my partner has been pink taxed. It's disgraceful. That is disgraceful. That is shameful. It is. It is awful. We are yeah. out of time, but I wanted to. Oh, do more. Can we do one more, please? <laughs> yeah, we can do one more. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Um. <clears throat> Is that the one? No, that's the one. That's the one I did already. That's the one I didn't do. <laughs> so, what should employers do to make the workplaces more inclusive to the LGBT plus community? Hmm. That's a difficult question, actually, because... It is, yes. See, I, I mean, with our garage, obviously, me and my fiance, so we're gay, and one, we've got one of our member staff is, um, and I think it's just about having empathy towards people and not being judgmental and you know even no matter what sex you're in like you can tell if someone's coming in you can get a feel of someone in an interview can't you you know and it's just, yeah. I think just trying to you know, like you do with your friends you know you try and surround yourself with nice friends don't you and you spend so much time at work to sort of just make a judgment on on people that aren't judgmental and aren't going to make people feel unwelcome or you know, have comments said to them and stuff, you know, it's just, just be a bit, bit more humanity in you, really. That's, that's, it's so beautiful how you made such an inclusive space for LGBT plus people, though, in, a, in an industry that's traditionally kept people like us, people who are, like who are not men or people who are LGBT plus out, and you've made sort of the perfect place, and I really hope you grow, and I hope that you open one Thank you. in in bristol too so i can come and say hi we've got so many more comments but we are out of time but thank you cool. everybody who's joined um and thank, thank you, you so much for, uh, for coming thank you in. love and chat with you yay and thank you rs grassroots education for sponsoring this series and i'll see you in another two weeks for another badass engineers thanks friends bye 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 bye